Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired operating systems engineer from Microsoft going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days. And specifically, I'm the engineer that wrote the zip file support that you've seen in Windows since Win95's Plus Pack, and then I believe it became part of the mainstream build in Windows 98. Either way, it's been in there ever since, and it really hasn't changed all that much in the 30 years since. And so today I'm going to tell you the story of how it came to be and how I came this close to getting fired over it. It's quite a story. We had legal, we had HR, we had everybody involved, the whole catastrophe. So the story begins just a few months after I started at Microsoft in 1993. I spent about three or four months on MS-DOS, and then by early 94, I was back full time and I was working on Olay 32. And at some point during that spring, I saw a demo of the Windows 95 user interface that was being prepared for the upcoming release. It might have been a preview in a magazine, I'm not exactly sure where I saw it, but I was pretty enamored with it. So I wanted to learn more about it, and moreover, I wanted to write some code for it. And so I started to wonder how I could write a shell extension. And ultimately I found, I think, an MSJ sample called Big GAC, which I've never been able to find since. And it wasn't the Global Assembly Cache, because it was G-A-K with a K. If you can find that sample, please point me at it and shoot me an email. In any event, the sample didn't really do anything except put icons in a folder, but that's really all I needed to get going because from there I could figure out the rest of the iShell folder and iShell view interfaces and do what I needed to do to expose whatever it was that I was going to expose in the shell. So I had some of the requisite pieces. I had the template for a shell extension and I had icons being populated inside of an iShell folder, but what could I expose? What could be useful? What could I do that's practical with this? And it came pretty quickly to me that zip files would be a very natural thing to expose because they're structured hierarchical contain items that you would represent with icons in a folder, very much like a file system. So even though we were working a lot of hours on the actual product, what spare time I had at home, I wound up writing some shareware that I released as a program called Visual Zip. And to keep myself motivated during this whole process of writing code at home at night, I had uh, stopped at this house that I saw in the residential area near Microsoft that to me, it was my dream house. It was like a 3,000 square foot house and a guy had a red Corvette that was parked in the driveway and he was washing it. It's all I wanted at the time. So I took one of the real estate flyers and I cut the picture of the house out and I stuck it on my monitor and that kept me going when I started to get bored or wanted to do other things like, I don't know, watch must see TV back in those days, which I did anyway. So I didn't code much on Thursday nights. So anyway, I released it as shareware and eventually it was selling like 5, 10, 15 at best copies per day. And uh, you might be wondering, Dave, you work at Microsoft, how can you be selling stuff on the side? And the thing is, I'd been selling stuff on the side to put myself through college long before I got to Microsoft. I had software called Hypercache out there for the Amiga and some other minor stuff. But when I got hired at Microsoft, I said, hey, can I keep doing that? And they were like, yeah, yeah, you can keep doing that. The only conditions are A, it can't be competitive with Microsoft, and B, you need your manager's approval in advance. And if it's actually related to your day job, then you need VP and not just your manager approval. And that will become key in a moment. Either way, when I wrote and released that I was working in Olay, not on the shell, so it wasn't yet directly related to my day job, and so I had the manager approval as required. This is where it gets a little stickier because after I wrote the shell extension, I was kind of knowledgeable about the shell at this point and I was really enjoying working on it. So I managed to finagle my way into a job working on the NT shell, which was porting the Win95 shell over to what would become NT and XP and everything else that you know today. So somewhat ironically, it was my experience writing this shell extension that is ultimately called Visual Zip in the market. And it was my writing of that that led me to get a job on the shell team. Somebody on the Win95 shell team, who shall remain nameless, but they took intense offense at the fact that I had a side hustle. Some friend or relative that was also trying to write a shell extension took offense and contacted him, and he contacted, not me, not my boss, not my boss's boss. No, he went directly to HR to have me fired. And that was a little shocking. Because even though I was pretty certain I had all my ducks in a row and had done nothing wrong, just the risk of losing your job and all your stock options at Microsoft in the 1990s, things like that tend to hit pretty close to home. So pretty quickly the news trickled down and made it to my manager and to our chief programmer. And uh, they spent a few sleepless nights worrying about me and trying to figure out how to save my job, for which I am eternally thankful. Now I was gonna say this could be related to my autism, but no, it's definitely related to my autism, which is that I tend to perseverate over problems and obsess over them and think of nothing else. When it's bothering me, I have to fix it and I can't compartmentalize and set things aside. 
And so I, my mind was running about 24 hours a, a day on this thing around the clock. And I eventually decided, well, I'm just going to force the outcome. I'm going to write to the VP and see what he has to say about it. Because if he approves, it's all moot. Because then I can do it even if it is related to my day job. But you don't have to worry about the argument of the definition. And so he looped in. I believe it was the general counsel who either would have been Bill Newcomb or it would have been, I think it actually was, Brad Smith. So whichever of those two guys it was, I'm also eternally grateful to them for sending back a six-word reply that gave me my reprieve. It was, I have no problem with this. And that was awesome because now I knew that I had approval going up to general counsel and the president of the company, I believe. Well, I don't know when Brad became president, but that same guy, anyway, he had no problem with it. So screw the guy in the 95 shell team. And so I kept selling my five or 10 copies a day or whatever it was for however long it went on for another six months or something. And then one morning, uh, thinking this thing was all done and closed, I get a call from Microsoft. It's a lady from Microsoft. She wants to know, am I Dave Plummer, the author of Visual Zip? I'm like, yeah. And she says, okay, well, we want to purchase it from you and want to acquire it. I'm like, well, that's interesting. Uh, what should I do? And she says, well, you'll need to come down and we'll have a discussion about it and talk about terms and stuff. And I said, all right, what building are you in? Because I can come by, you know, in about 30 minutes. And she was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We have to get legal involved and travel involved and all kinds of stuff before we can actually arrange anything. And I'm like, that's really weird why would you need to do all that for me to come visit you and talk to you at a company that I already work at? And that's when it became apparent that she didn't know, and I didn't know that she didn't know that I worked at Microsoft. She was just cold calling the author of Visual Zip in order to explore an acquisition. So long story short, we got that all settled out and got past that initial awkwardness, and uh, we agreed to terms because they made me an offer. And I accepted their first best and only offer. Now, why is that? Why did I not negotiate? Well, one, at this point, I was kind of sensitive about keeping my job. And here's the thing. If I didn't, they would have to buy or write their own in order to get that functionality into Windows one way or another. At which point, I would then, as the author of a zip file utility, be in competition with Microsoft, which I couldn't do. So I would either have to quit my day job and live off of Visual Zip, which I was not prepared to do, or sell it to them or stop making it. So since selling it to them was the best of those options, like I said, I took their first best and only offer. I took the money and I bought a used 1994 Chevrolet Corvette, which at that point was like 18 months old, but, and I drove the wheels off that car. I put a roll cage in it, took it to the track a lot. I uh, put a supercharger on it. I added intercooling, custom fuel injection, all kinds of stuff. Quite a learning experience, and it all stemmed from writing a shell extension DLL. Now, if you enjoy these odd bits of history about Microsoft and the olden days of coding and software, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any interest in matters related to autism or ASD, please check out the free sample of my book on Amazon. It's everything I know about living a successful life on the spectrum. Thanks, and in the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. <laughs>